All right. Yeah, hey, Coach, how did uh, the first pad of practice go for you all today? I thought it went uh, relatively well. Good back and forth. You know, obviously you're coming off a day off, but it was a pretty spirited practice out there. Really good give and take. And uh, like I said, we're pressing these guys, being aggressive, work some more situational uh, football. The ball comes out and it's tight windows, but it was really good competition back and forth, I thought, the whole day. And uh, could you run us through the punter transaction today? Sure. Yeah, uh, obviously Sterling, he's not healthy. So we um, had an injury settlement with him or wave him, wave him injure. And we'll see, you know, obviously he, he'll rehab. It's not the end of the road for Sterling, but we needed the roster spot because we had to have a healthy punter against Tennessee. So that's why we signed Cameron. Dom's doing good. He was working through something coming back. We still expect Dom to punt this preseason. We need somebody to win that job. We didn't see uh, Tyler Davidson uh, today. Was he? Uh, yeah, so Tyler's just working through something. I, I would not expect it to be anything long term, but, we'll, you know, we'll see. Was Davidson something, something that happened in practice? No. Was that? No. So he wasn't out here. So. And when you, I know you talked a little bit about the running back situation. It was Sunday, Saturday, and they all went together. What are you, like, do you want to have a committee? Would you rather have a guy kind of be like Derek and, and take no. over? Like, what would you want? That's, what, that's why, I, yeah, not, sorry not to cut you off, but I think the, the simplest way to, to put that is, that's why I don't get in comparison. This is a completely different situation. Uh, we, we've got a few guys that we think can carry the football, and it's going to play itself out. I mean, you're going through now a 17-game regular season, and so we'll see who emerges. Like I said, when he started camp, Mike gets the first shot, and it's going to be competitive back there, and we'll keep mixing and matching, and those guys will fight it out through the entire preseason in camp. Home team. Coach, the uh, Panthers today waived the player uh, JT eBay for a hit he had over the wide receivers. Um, what are the things you communicate that are acceptable and unacceptable when you have pads on and how guys have to take care of themselves? Yeah, it's, it's hard for me to comment on another team. I understand what, you, what you're asking. Uh, again, we, we try to coach guys the right way, to understand the rules, play clean. We want to obviously play physical and tough, but we don't want to do anything that's going to hurt the team, and, and you got to know the rules. So, again, that's – it's hard for me to comment on another thing. I understand the, the, the question, but yes, we try to coach our guys to know the rules. Charles, on your right. It's a very athletic catch by uh, Ricky Darby uh, at the goal line. Uh, can you talk about what you've seen from him and, and, and what is the opportunity for guys like him to make an impact on your good Sure. You know, uh, I, like most of these rookies, it's a, these guys are working and these guys are it's competitive and we're throwing everybody in there. You know, I don't care who's in there right now. We, we got to, if you're going to have true competition, Got to give guys opportunity. Got to give them opportunities with the ones if they earn it, twos or threes. And we really don't even have a depth chart right now, but just to mix and match. No different than linemen. You know, everybody needs to take it. Try to block Grady Jarrett. Those are the guys you got to play on Sunday. So it's good. Uh, Frank's progressing. It was good for him to show up, and he's got to continue to do it. Great to see you. Good to see you. You been off? No, I just had to be here. Is as physical with, with pads in terms of when you first got in the league or I mean, that concerted effort to keep guys healthy? Would you like a little bit more out of that? or is it? That's well, all relative. I mean, the rules are what they are. And I'd you know, like to think we've gotten smarter in, in how we've protected the players and the modern athlete. But again, you're not tackling right now. So it's, you know, there's a way to practice. We're still, you know, thudding. We're not doing anything right now scrimmaging. That is the nice thing about having preseason this year because we will get to see players live tackle. Really helps you evaluate the special teams and obviously defensively. Arthur, situational red zone stuff down here right in practice. Really good communication on defense. Please, with how quickly that group is starting to come together, all three really units, I guess, yeah. three. So they, they're, um, like I said, I, I know I keep repeating myself, but there's good competition. Those guys, you see some confidence building. Those are those are tight window throws, and it was good. We, we worked it, obviously, seven on seven, and then we worked it again there a team. And we'll keep adding situations every day. And yeah, I, I've been very pleased with how the defense is responding and how they're coming together. The, the catch that Pitts had in the end zone there, is that kind of what you maybe saw from him when you were watching and evaluating him, like that level of concentration to be able to kind of catch that off the pitch? Is that, is that something that you can tell even on film with a guy? Sure. I mean, it's no secret he's a huge target. Um, and, you know, we had, Kyle knows what, what the expectation is for him, and, and it's good to see him make those plays. I mean, you got to make them in practice, and you build them up and to make them in the games. And so it was encouraging to see him make those plays that we expect him to make. Is he 
what you know as a former tight ends coach, is he what you everything you expected when you drafted him at this point, or are there things that are surprising you with him? He's he's done a really good job. It's Kyle's everything we're asking him. We're trying to bring him along the right way. You know, when you you draft somebody that high, there's a lot of expectations thrown on him. It's a long journey, and, and it's so hard for some of these guys to focus in the present day to day because there's these unbelievable expectations thrown on him. He's got to understand the big picture and just progress every day and understand it will naturally happen if he if he comes along the way we think he will. And that doesn't mean you know. I think sometimes these guys they get in not Kyle, but you could see it. Everything is outside social media, and it's like, all right, well, if he doesn't have 300 yards the first game, you know, you know, people, and you got to eliminate that noise and understand there's a big picture, and it's not just a hot take, week one, because it's a really long season, and it's, and hopefully he has a really long career too. Kevin, on your left. Hi. Uh, so yeah, first day of contact today with the pads on. Lots of young offensive linemen rotating in there. Jalen Mayfield, right tackle. Uh, saw Drew Dom against the Samson there too. Uh, can you just talk about you know those young guys how they're coming up and also if there's any update on Caleb and Gary's status at this point? Uh, no, no real update on Caleb. Uh, he's another guy. He's doing everything we're asking him to do. I, I don't anticipate that being too long. I mean, much longer. But well, again, I, it's hard to give a firm timetable because we got to do what's best interest of the player and the team. But Caleb's doing doing well. Uh, these young offensive linemen, they're all in there fighting it out. I mean, like I said, it's it was their first day in pads, and it's only they only a couple practices in in the NFL, and but I'm really pleased with that rookie class and the way they're working right now. Blaine in the back, Coach, you were around the special teams today with Coach Williams. Talk about what he brings and what you saw in him and how their special teams, how he's doing, what he's trying to implement. His plan. Yeah, I, you know, Marquise has done an unbelievable job since he's been here, and I didn't know Marquise personally, but. Craig Aukerman, who I worked with in Tennessee, highly recommended him. We interviewed a bunch of guys, and Marquise really stood out. And I really like the way he thinks, like all of our coaches. He, he knows how to, to adapt and problem solve. And it's really cool to see what he's done. He's taken it and run. And it's nice to have Steve Hoffman here. You know, with all of our staff, we have a good mix of experience and young coaches and guys, different points in their career. And uh, it's been fun to work with Marquise, and he's doing a great job. You mentioned uh, Pitts every week, comparing him to 300 yards week one. What's going on? I'm sure the same thing will be with Calvin as well when it comes to Julio. How is he embracing the go-to guy, the number yeah, one? Yeah, I mean, look, look, that's – and not to cut you off either, but I just don't believe in comparisons. I mean, I think the thing you, that people try to do, it's like you, you look at a piece of paper, a depth chart, things change either year. Your teams are going to change all the time. There's going to be injuries, and guys are going to be moving and moving out. All these guys are different players. You have a relative starting point. Like, maybe it reminds you of a player you coach – Characteristics, mentally off the field, how he learns. I mean, there's a lot of, but everybody's no, no. I know, no. I'm, I'm just saying, but it's not fair to say, hey, just because you lose player A, player B has got to be just like player A. There's a lot of ways to produce production in the passing game. Now with Calvin, there's a long-term plan, and the good thing about Calvin, you got to pull him back, and he understands the big picture. We're bringing him along. You uh, more reps today, and we'll continue to see how he progresses. But again, like, really happy with Calvin and what he's brought so far. And some guys do not won't rise to that opportunity at that moment. Calvin has that DNA where he wants to be the guy. I think you hope everyone wants to be the guy. Honestly, I mean, I just I don't know a professional athlete that doesn't want to come out here and be a starter. Now, some of them they get a role and they make a nice living, but I think most of those guys, if you ask them, and I don't speak for them, but I think most of those guys want to start. Going back to what um, Mike was talking about with with with, with, um, with uh, uh, number eight, do you think that he's good at, at insulating himself from all the social media noise that's out there? Do you think that that's part of his personality, being able to kind of tunnel vision that stuff? Oh, he's a very ma mature person. I mean, I, we're all flawed to it, right? I mean, if you just if you you can open up your phone now and you can have everybody critique Zach you go on there and people can take shots at you you can take shots at D Ledding take shots at me or Michael that's easy but I think it's hard I mean in today in the digital age I think it's hard but you got to try to remind people perspective and, and to stay in the present and and all that matters is, is trying to continue to improve every day what do you want to see from Calvin Murray from now until the first game of the season to uh, you know, on the field specifically Oh, with all our guys, we hope they improve and that we, we look like a, a functioning team coming out and that we continue to get better from week one to now week 18.
The same thing we have the expectation for all of, uh, all of our players and the guys that will make our, our roster. Uh, yeah, Coach, how important will it be for uh, Chris Williamson to keep uh, improving as you all put on the pass? Now, we see guys, you know, without the pass doing sure. great, and then you know, they got to keep it going once it's time to, you know, play, do more football things. Yeah, with all, with all those guys, that's, that's, that's why I'm excited about this preseason because because of you know, this, we're, we're new staff, year one in a program, we feel like we've got good, really good competition in a lot of spots, but we got to go out and, and – when you actually get out in those preseason games, it'll tell a lot about a lot of guys. And there's some days you, you, you can talk about perspective. Well, we may be installing certain covers of that day, and the, and the ball doesn't go Chris's way. So sometimes you got to really go back and look at the practice film and see, make sure he, he was good on his assignments. You know, some, some players, they may flash every day, but it just depends. You know, the ball may never come his way, and he did his job, and he was there in his run support, and he was, he was sound in coverage. But we'll assess that every day. And like I said, so far, we've been happy with Chris. All these guys are going to get every opportunity, and uh, we'll evaluate it day to day and week to week. Thank you. Jarvis, on your right. Mm -hmm. Hey, Coach, um, I saw Jalen Hawkins make a real nice play down in the red zone. Um, a lot of coaches like to look for that first year to second year jump. Are you that guy that kind of subscribe to that? Like, what, what's to look for as far as the guys making that jump from year one to year two? It certainly helps when guys have been in the NFL game. You, you know, that's a really long rookie year, and I think I've mentioned this before, is you know, last year to put last year, you know, that was an unusual year for all of us. And those rookies, it was, it was like I always said, I really feel bad for the undrafted rookie class because they didn't get as many opportunities. And I think the numbers, I don't have it off the top of my head, but it was uh, significantly lower on the opening of the roster. And so for him, Michael Walker, all those guys that are going their second year, um, yeah, we expect to make a jump. And hopefully they continue to. And we've been happy with all. Have you been able to uh, assess communication, how well it's been with the offensive line until the guys really get gelled towards the end of camp? Yeah, they, they, they've done a nice job. I mean, we, we, like I said, we put stress on them, put a lot of stress on the center, and we can tell. I mean, obviously, we go back and evaluate the film, how we ID things and the communication. So, like I said, I've been very pleased. Uh, Led's doing a great job with those guys, and they're fighting out. And we're mixing and matching because you have to. And, and you got to solve those problems because they're going to come up during the season. You, you would hope that you could play with the same five every week. And maybe some years you, you, you're forced enough to do that, but the reality is they're going to be a week or two or maybe more where you got to mix and match. And so you, those guys got to get used to playing with each other, and you got to let guys get a fair shot to earn a job. Thank you. I, I love when you get his home team. That's my favorite, like, <laughs> it's my favorite thing.